So what exactly is voltage? Perhaps you've seen this word many times. What really is voltage? Voltage can be described as an electromotive force, also a potential difference, a difference in electric potential between two points. So for instance, let's say we have two points. Let's call this point A and point B. At point A, the electric potential is 12 volts. At point B, let's say it's 8 volts. So what is the voltage across this resistor? The voltage is going to be the difference between the potential of A and the potential at B. So 12 minus 8 is 4. So the voltage across this resistor is 4 volts. The unit of voltage is the volt. And 1 volt represents one joule of work that can be done when one column of charge flows from point A to point B. So in this case, let's say if we have one column of charge flowing through this resistor. The voltage is 4 volts. So as you go from A to B, the voltage drops, I mean the potential drops by 4 volts. So when one column of charge passes through that resistor, 4 joules of work will be done on the resistor. So if we have two columns of charge flowing through this resistor, then it's going to be 8 joules of work done per two columns of charge, because 8 divided by 2 will still give us 4. And so the greater the amount of charge that passes through this resistor, the more work that will be done on that resistor. And so voltage, it's a ratio. It relates the work done by the charges with the amount of charges flowing through a resistor. So one volt, you can describe it as one joule of work done per one column of charge. You could also describe it as one joule of electric potential energy per column of charge. So there's different ways in which you could describe the unit volt. It's important to understand that when the electric potential energy changes, then the charges will perform uh, work. So work can be described as the change in kinetic energy is also described as the negative change in potential energy, in this case, electric potential energy. Now the unit for work, kinetic energy, and electric potential energy is the joule. So they all share the same unit. Now let's go over some questions. So let's say if we have a resistor, let's call this point A and point B. Uh, let's say the electric potential at point A is 16 volts and the electric potential at point B is 9 volts. What is the voltage across the resistor? So make sure you understand the difference between voltage and electric potential. Electric potential is basically the potential at a single point, at point A or at point B, but voltage describes the potential difference between these two points. So the potential difference between point A and B is 16 minus 9, so it's going to be 7 volts. Now, in which direction will the current flow? Will it flow from A to B or B to A? So A is at a higher potential than B. Conventional current always flow in a direction from high potential to low potential. Keep in mind, conventional current flows in the opposite direction compared to electron flow. The electrons are going to flow towards the more positive potential, that is, the higher potential. Because they're negatively charged, they are attracted to the positive charges. But conventional current, it flows from a high potential to a low potential. The same way as water will flow from a high position, let's say like the top of a mountain, to a low position, like a valley. Now let's say we have another resistor and we're going to use the same points, point A and point B. Let's say the electric potential at point A is 12 volts and at point B is 23 volts. So what is the voltage across the resistor? And what is the direction of the current flowing through the resistor? 
So the voltage is just going to be the difference between these two values. 23 minus 12, that's going to give you 11 volts. Now what about the direction of the current? Is it going to flow from A to B or B to A? So B, this time, is at a high potential, and A is at a low potential. So the current will always flow from a high potential to a low potential. So in this case, it's going to go from uh, B to A. Now let's work on one more example. So let's call this point A and point B. And this time, point A has a potential of negative 8 volts, and B is negative 12 volts. So what is the voltage across this resistor? So the voltage is going to be the difference between these two. So if we take a negative 8 and subtract it by negative 12, the two negative signs become positive, and negative 8 plus 12 is 4. So the difference between negative 8 and negative 12 is 4 volts. Now, which one is at a higher potential? Negative 8 or negative 12? If you were to place these two numbers, let's say on a number line, which one will be higher? Negative 8 will be to the right of negative 12. So let's say if we drew a number line, this would be 0, this would be negative 8, and negative 12 will be somewhere in this region. So on a number line, the numbers to the right have a higher value. So therefore, negative 8 is higher than negative 12. So A is at a high potential, and B is at a relatively a lower potential. So the current is going to flow from A to B in this case, from a high potential to a low electric potential. Now let's talk about batteries. Perhaps you've seen this battery, a typical AA battery. The right side is the positive terminal, the left side is the negative terminal. And a typical AA battery has a voltage of 1.5 volts. But how can we increase this voltage? Well, if you take two AA batteries and if you connect them in series with each other, so you have to connect the positive terminal of one battery to the negative terminal of the other. And across these two batteries, that is, at these two points, if you connect that to a voltmeter, the voltmeter will read a voltage of 3 volts. So that's how you can increase the voltage in a circuit, is by adding batteries in series with each other. You have to connect the positive terminal of one battery to the negative terminal of the other. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you're not going to get 3 volts. Now, instead of connecting two batteries, let's say, in series with each other, what if we connect them parallel to each other? What's going to happen? So let's say we connect the positive terminal of one battery to the positive terminal of another, and then the negative terminals to each other. What's going to happen? Well, the voltage is not going to change. The voltage across these two points, let's call this point a and point B will still be 1.5 volts. So what changes then? Whenever you connect two batteries in series with each other, the amount of current that they can dish out increases. So let's say if you connect the first one in a short circuit, let's say the maximum current that it can dish out is 5 amps. And let's say the second battery is identical. It can also give out 5 amps then the maximum current that will be released at point A will be the sum of these two. So increasing the current can be accomplished by connecting the batteries parallel to each other. But if you connect the batteries in series with respect to each other, then you could increase the voltage. So now you know how to increase the current and the voltage based on the way you connect the batteries together. Now let's talk about the units for voltage. You'll see units like volts, kilovolts, or even millivolts. One kilovolt, it's a basically a large number. Kilo represents a thousand. So if you see a kilovolt, it's equal to a thousand volts. A millivolt is a small number. 
1 millivolt is basically 0 0.001 of a volt. Now 1 volt is 1000 millivolts. And so these are some things that you want to keep in mind. Now if you need to convert between millivolts and volts, to go from millivolts to volts, you need to divide by 1000. And to go from volts to millivolts, multiply by 1000. So let's say if I had 0 0.05 volts, and I want to convert that to millivolts, I would multiply by 1,000. 0 0.05 times 1,000 would give me 50 millivolts. Now, if you want to go from kilovolts to volts, multiply by 1,000. And if you want to go from volts to kilovolts, divide by 1,000. So if I had, let's say, 4.8 kilovolts, I would multiply that by 1,000 and that would equal 4,800 volts.